Hurricane Aaron is making its closest approach to the United States today, and it's about to cause some big problems, including storm surge, life-threatening rip currents, high wave heights, in addition to tropical storm force winds. Additionally, we are expecting the coldest stretch of weather we've seen all summer long next week. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with Hurricane Aaron, which is just off the coast of North Carolina this morning. This is a massive of hurricane that is continuing to churn up tons of water, leading to big storm surge and also very high waves up and down the East Coast. We've had life-threatening rip currents as well, with hundreds of rescues over the last few days, anywhere from southern New England all the way back into Florida. And unfortunately, that will be a problem over the next few days. This is The rip current threat is really not going anywhere, so that is still a big concern. Obviously, the outer bands have been getting very close, if not reaching the outer banks, but as this continues to turn off to the north and northeast, we are going to start to see at least the rainfall simmer down and then we're going to continue to see the high waves in addition to storm surge continue all the way through this afternoon even into the evening hours anywhere from Delaware all the way back over into South Carolina and unfortunately Hurricane Aaron is already doing damage to Cape Hatteras this is a photo from last night showing the sand dudes completely come over by all of the water that is currently coming inland this is again very high waves so we're talking about 15 20 foot waves that are going to be going right over the sand dune throughout the day today and on top of that we're expecting storm surge, which means a lot of areas in Cape Hatteras will be flooded. And here's a closer view of Hurricane Aaron, and you can definitely see that there's really not much of an eye anymore. We still have a pretty decent center, though. Again, a lot of deep convection continuing to go up around Hurricane Aaron, which has led it to basically stay right around major hurricane status. It is also moving to the northeast, so it is now moving kind of away from the United States, and this right now is about the closest that it'll be to North Carolina. However, we are anticipating that these impacts are going to last all the way throughout the day today, and perhaps even into tomorrow when it comes to the rip currents. High waves, in addition to very high tides, are expected to continue in parts of North Carolina and even back up near Virginia Beach all the way through tonight and into early tomorrow as well. Now let's talk more about the timing and the impacts out of Hurricane Aaron over the next few days, beginning with what is happening today. This is what it looks like by lunchtime. So again, Hurricane Aaron will be moving away from North Carolina. We will continue to see tropical storm force winds probably through at least lunchtime today. And then eventually by late tonight, this is all all the way off to the southeast of New England. There will be some minor impacts in the Cape Cod region as we go into tonight and tomorrow, mainly regarding wind and also higher wave heights. And then on Friday and Saturday, this is going to become an extra tropical system as it moves into the northern Atlantic Ocean. And then right behind that, it looks like we're not really talking about much in the tropics other than maybe another tropical system forming just to the north of the Leeward Islands as we go later into this week and also into the weekend. Now, as we've alluded to over the last few days, Hurricane Aaron has continued to grow in size. And even though it's been a weaker hurricane, even though it's still a high-end Category 2 hurricane, you can see the hurricane force wind field has gotten larger over time, despite this right here being around where it was a Category 5 hurricane. The wind field has grown in size substantially. I mean, 2 to 3x what it was just a few days ago, and that is why tropical storm force winds have been reaching North Carolina. So generally speaking, again, this is a very impressive hurricane. If this was any further to the west, this would be a catastrophe for some areas in the Carolinas. If we saw landfall in the United States, this would almost undoubtedly be one of the more significant hurricanes that we've seen over the last few years, especially in the Carolinas. Now, these are the peak wind gusts that we can expect today and into early tomorrow across the East Coast. We are anticipating that the Outer Banks will still see wind gusts around 60 to 75 miles per hour. This will mainly fall between now all the way through about 1 o'clock in this afternoon and then also back over into southern New England and even along the East Coast across North Carolina. We are expecting wind gusts to be around 30 to 45 miles per hour for a peak tonight into early tomorrow morning. And I would not rule out some ice isolated power outages back over in the outer banks of North Carolina as the winds will be reaching their maximum velocity. And another big concern that is going to continue for the next couple of days that I cannot urge enough is that if you're going to the beaches, we are going to continue to see very dangerous and life-threatening rip currents. Hundreds of people have been rescued this week. The, all across this red area, which literally goes from Maine back towards Miami, Florida, there is a high risk of rip currents today, and tomorrow is no different as of now. We are looking at a very dangerous rip current and set up all the way from Maine back into Miami once again on Friday. So if you're going to the beach, check the flag. And a lot of these areas, including North Carolina specifically, basically the waters are unswimmable. You should not be going in them. Surfing is a little bit of a different story, but if you are swimming in the waters, it is hard. It's very dangerous out there, especially in North Carolina, where a lot of evacuation orders are still in place because of Hurricane Aaron. And some of the worst storm surge will be happening over the next few hours, anywhere from New Jersey all the way back over into South Carolina, where a 
widespread one to three feet of storm surge is expected. That goes all the way towards Long Island and also back into South Carolina, just south of Myrtle Beach. And if you're anywhere between Duck and Cape Lookout, which is where a lot of evacuation orders are already in place, we are anticipating two to four feet of storm surge here throughout the rest of the morning and also into the afternoon. If you're back over in the lower Chesapeake Bay, we're also expecting around one to three feet of storm surge there, including areas like Virginia Beach. So again, stay away from the waters. If you're under an evacuation order, you should have already evacuated by now with how high the water is going to get in some of these locations. And behind Hurricane Aaron, the tropics are going to continue to stay active. We have a large red area here, which means that there's a high probability of a tropical storm forming over the next few days. This is just to the east right now of the Lesser Antilles, but we'll be coming up towards the Leeward Islands, which is likely where we'll see tropical storm Fernand form, and that'll eventually move towards Bermuda. So if you're over in Bermuda, be ready for a potential tropical storm. And then back over on the east coast, the only thing to be worried about for now is Hurricane Aaron. We will likely see rip currents continue into next week, assuming that another tropical system forms here just to the east of the United States. The good news is that this is not forecasted to go towards the United States at this point. It should be turning out to sea just like Aaron is. And then we have another area of development in the main development region. This one is going to probably fizzle out before it ever gets close to the Caribbean Sea, but maybe in the long term, it could be something to keep an eye on. But for right now, not expecting any development, at least near the Caribbean Sea. Now, across the entire United States, we are about to have a really big weather pattern change, and we're going to talk more in detail about this in our next forecast. But I do want to at least give you a preview of what is upcoming this weekend into next week, and that is this right here. A big plume of cold air is going to be coming right out of Canada as we go into Sunday and Monday. If you're back over in the Midwest, you're definitely going to feel this on Sunday. But by Monday and Tuesday, look at all that dark blue making it into the central and northern plains, back into the northeast, and even back over into Texas, where we are anticipating some of the coldest weather that we've seen all summer long. We could even have some record-breaking low temperatures for this time of the year in parts of the United States. So it's about to get pretty cold next week, and this will basically last the entire work week. This is going to be some of the nicest weather that we've seen all August long, and then eventually as we go into September, that heat is likely going to make a return. But definitely enjoy this weather. Next week looks phenomenal for much of the country. These are the high temperatures as we go into Saturday. Most areas in Texas in the 100s, Midwest down into the 70s. By Monday and Tuesday, though, temperatures are going to drop into the 60s and 70s from the Midwest all the way back through the Northeast. If you're back over in the Gulf Coast, you, we have at least some relief coming your way, I think, by Thursday. However, if you're back over in Florida, there's really not much of a sign of that cold of weather. We'll probably get a very weak cold front moving through those areas. But generally speaking, again, most of the country will, will feel this east of the Rockies. These are the forecasted low temperatures for Tuesday, and we are anticipating most areas in the Midwest to fall into the 40s and 50s. There could even be some areas in the upper 30s. Now, on top of this, we are expecting severe weather to be pretty minimal over the next few days, just some isolated severe weather in the northern plains in the Midwest. As we go into early next week, not seeing much in the way of severe weather, probably one of the quietest time periods that we've seen all year long as we go into next week. And also on top of that, it's going to be really nice for our temperatures. And then eventually, as we go into early September, we have no clue what's going to happen as of right now, aside from the fact that it'll probably be above average for temperatures east of the Rockies after this cold blast moves out. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll likely have another video tomorrow talking all about the big cold blast that is coming, so stay tuned and we'll see you guys all again in the next forecast.